Hello all, in this particular tutorial, we will learn how to do the Armen backup in Oracle database. Armen backup is also the physical backup of your database. Now, what is Armen? Armen stands for Recovery Manager. So, Armen, the MAN from Recovery Manager. It is an Oracle utility for backup and restore. Oracle Armen allows us to perform full database backup, incubator backups, archive log backups, restore full database, restore particular table space, restore particular data file, validate backup and many more. It is one of the most powerful utility in Oracle database. Now, <clears throat> the steps is you will set the Oracle environment variable using orinv and then you will run the rmen command. So dot rinv and then Armen target slash, which means you will be connecting to the local database. Now you can connect to the, you, using Armen, you can connect to the remote database using the DNS name uh, or a file. So it is possible that you are, you can connect to the remote database using Armen target. We will not see that in this particular tutorial. Now, before we understand the Armen, we need to understand two concepts. One is archive log mode and no archive log mode. This is a very, very important concept. And what it means is like, if the database is in no archive log mode, it just do not generate the archive logs and the, the point in time recovery is not possible. When the database is in no archive log mode, only the cold backup is possible and the database has to be in mount mode. You can take the backup when the database is in mount mode. In the archive log, the database can be in open mode when you take the RMN backup. Point in time recovery is possible because the redo logs are generated and all backup types are possible. Like you can take cold backup, hot backup, all of all the types of backups that you can take in archive log mode. How do you find out if the database is in archive log or not, no archive log mode? You can use either archive log list option. You can use archive log list option or you can say select log mode from V dollar database. So both of these options will tell you whether your database is in archive log or no archive log. Now, I just want to make sure that you understand that in no archive log, only the cold backup is possible and the database has to be in mount mode. So if your database is in no archive log and if the database is open and if you try to take a backup, it's going to fail. It's 100% going to fail. Now, we also need to understand the concept of cold backup versus hot backup. Now, Cold backup can be in, uh, you can take the cold backup in archive log or no archive log. There is no, there is nothing like you cannot take the cold backup in archive log mode. You can take the cold backup in, in archive log or no archive log. But cold backup is a concept which is when you, when the database is in mount mode, that time you take the cold backup. When, and since the database is in mount mode, no users can connect to the database. This cold backup is also called as consistent backup and no archive log supports only cold backup. So you can only take the cold backup in no archive log mode. In archive log mode, you can take all kinds of backups. And hot backup is the, is the uh, for hot backup, the database has to be in archive log mode. And the database is in open state, which means users can connect to the database. And hot backup is also called as inconsistent backup. Now, hot backup is only possible if the database is in archive log mode. Now, what we also need to understand is the concept of FRA. FRA stands for fast recovery area, fast recovery area. And this is a designated directory for the flashback logs, archive logs, the copy of the data files, the multiplexing of control file, multiplexing of redo log, the archive log backup, the database backup, etc, etc. So FRA stores a lot of the information and FRA is a separate physical storage from your database. You design a particular drive or a directory for FRA and you, you say that how much of that particular space has to be used by. So these are the two parameters. One is DB recovery file dash size. And here I'm saying give FRA 10 gig and this is the location. And this is the location that I'm going to create using the make dir. And this is a dynamic change. You don't have to bounce your database for this particular change F to set the FRA, you don't need to bounce your database. Now, what we uh, need to understand is how to convert the database to archive log. If your database is not already in archive log, then you need, 
if you if you want to convert it to archive log you need to either set one of the log arc dest or you need to set the db recovery file dest if you have set the db recovery file dest you don't need to set the log arc dest one or log arc dest so if you if what you need to do is you need to shut the database start the database in mount mode alter database archive log then open the database and check whether it is now in archive log using archive log list and you can also use the select log mode you can also use this particular so either of these options will work now once the database is in archive log then you are able to take the cold backup hot backup all kind of backups now i also want to cover the rman configuration so there is a concept of rman configuration what it does is like it it controls the behavior of rman so if you have like if you if you want to take complex backup set then you will say uh, <coughs> configure device type disk parallel backup type as complex backup set so you will change these particular parameters and i'll show you how to change this particular parameter and i'm going to show you the control file auto backup is off here and as a best practice you need to make sure that the control file auto backup is turned on what the control file auto backup means is like whenever you take the backup any kind of backup uh, it will automatically take the backup of control file and sp file so as a best practice we need to turn this particular parameter on and how do you do that so you will say configure control file auto backup on so you will use this particular parameter and you can see it has changed and it is stored and now if i do the show all here it was off now the control file auto backup has been turned on now 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 <laughs> that we have set the fra we have set the control file auto backup we are ready to take our database backup we can take the backup of your database using backup database plus archive log or we can take the backup like we can take the backup of the database alone and then we can take the backup of archive log all so we can use either of these options this particular command will take the backup of the database along with archive log this particular command will have to take the database backup then we will be taking the archive log backup you, choice is yours you can take any kind of backup now now remember that here when i take the backup i'm not specifying the location where the backup is going i'm not specifying the location so by default in this case in this case the backup will go to fra location the fast recovery area that we have set here it will go to this particular location so the backup will automatically go to that particular location now if you don't want the backup to go to fra we can actually allocate a channel and when we allocate the channel we can specify the device ty type disk format so here what i'm saying is like I'm allocating a channel and I'm saying that my backup should go to this particular directory. And when I run this particular backup database, that time the backup will not go to FRA and it will go to this particular location. It will go to this particular location. However, the control file auto backup and SP file will still go to FRA because we have not changed that destination here. Now, we also need to understand the difference of incremental. Uh, what is the incremental backup? So RMAN allows us to have a multi-level backup and multi-level backup means a uh, level zero and level one and level one can be a level one can be accumulative and differential and what i want to explain here is like the level zero backup is actually a full backup and the incremental level one is actually either a cumulative and a differential so when you say a cumulative backup it is always a difference from the full backup so if i take a backup on monday it will find out how many pages were changed or how many data block got changed between sunday and monday and it will store that into the backup file if i take another cumulative backup on tuesday it will capture all the changes that happened from the last full backup from the last level zero full backup until tuesday and so on now if you take the differential backup it is a difference from last backup the last backup can be either full either delta either cumulative so let's say if we have taken a full backup on sunday and if i take a differential backup it only captures the changes that happened between sunday to monday and if i take another differential backup differential backup is also called delta backup if i take a differential delta backup on tuesday it will only capture the difference between monday to tuesday it won't capture the changes from sunday to tuesday and hence when you take the delta backup or differential backup your backup image will be smaller in size cumulative the it will keep on increasing as the number of changes increases in the database now if remember here here if i take the full backup and then if i take de delta backup here then it will capture so it the what it does it captures 
the change is from the last backup and last backup can be of any type now what <coughs> so here is the concept we have level zero incremental backup it is a base backup for su subsequent incremental backups or un in otherwise it is a parent of all the backups and it copies all blocks containing data and then when the next backup happens the level one backup happens it will the level one backup will actually refer to the level zero backup and whatever changes happen between level zero and level one will be captured in the level one backup so the level one backup will be always the difference from the level zero backup remember this now level one incremental backup as i said can be either cumulative or differential and the differential is default and here you can see level one incremental backups are differential by default and what differential means that it will differential incremental means any backup it will capture all the backups after the la la latest incremental backup either level one or level zero and cumulative means it will only capture the difference from the level zero which is a full backup level zero full backup so he here is the difference now if you want to perform an incremental backup at level 0, you will say backup incremental level 0 database. If you wanted to take a differential incremental backup, you will say backup incremental level 1 database. And if you wanted to take a cumulative, then you will use. So when you take the incremental level 1, and if you don't specify this particular keyword, by default, it is differential backup or the delta backup or this kind of backup, not this kind of backup. The, if you want to take the cumulative backup, you have to use the word cumulative so when you don't use the word cumulative it is a differential or the delta backup now the how do you find the backup information now that you have taken the backup and you want to know the backup information you have multiple options and i'm not listed all you can list backup you can list the backup set you can list the backup of the database you can list the archive log all and there are some dynamic views that you can use and I, again i have not listed all these are some of the key dynamic views there are multiple dynamic views that you can use uh, v dollar rman backup job details v dollar backup archive log details v dollar backup files and this particular views will give you the information about the backup that you have performed and what can be backed up now this is very important the when you take the backup you can take the backup of sp file control file data file archive log so these things can be backed up what is not backed up is the password file remember the rman backup utility don't take the backup of password file now that we have seen all of this let me go back to the beginning and let's let's connect to our database so i'm going to make this a little bigger give it a minute and i'm going to say clear and i'm going to set the environmental variable first that's done and what i'm going to do is i'm going to connect to the database as sql plus as sysdba that's done and i'm going to check whether my database is in archive log and you can see it is in no archive log and i can run this particular query or what i can do i'll run it here because i want to capture that output i'm going to run it here and you can see my database is in no archive log mode now what we are going to do is we are going to we are going to convert the database into archive log but before that we are going to set the fra location so to set the FRA location, let's create a directory and I'm going to open another putty session. Uh, otherwise, I'll open <clears throat> the okay. And I'm going to create a directory. So clear. I'm going to create a directory. And once and I'm going to go to that particular directory. This is a brand new directory. It will be an empty. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to <clears throat> set this particular two parameter, the db rec recovery dash file size and the db recovery file test i'm going to and here this particular directory is what i created here so i'm going to set these two particular parameters that's done and then what i'm going to do is now the recovery test is set fra is set i'm going to start the database into and i'm going to change the database to archive log and what for that what we need to do is we need to run this command shut the database start up in mount mode alter database archive log open the database verify that it is in archive log mode so let's and instead of copying and running one by one i'm going to just take all of these commands and i'm going to paste it here so let me do post clear and and i'm going to run all of those commands together so let's i've i've entered the those commands so in the background what is going to what is happening is like my database is getting shut down then it's going to start in the mount mode then it's going to convert the database to archive log, it's going to open the database, and then we are going to verify that it is 
now in the archive log so here you can see it is in no archive mode let's give it a minute for it to complete this action and the database has been started and you can see now it is in the archive mode here it clearly says no archive mode now it is saying it is in archive mode and it's going to use the db recovery file desk now what i'm going to do is i'm going to and here we captured it as well so i'm going to rerun the same query my transaction would have lost so it will reconnect so you can see it is reconnected and now what are the output that i get is the archive log so select log mode from v dollar database shows that my database is in the archive log so that's done we have converted our database to archive log now we are going to look at this r main configuration parameters so what i'm going to do and i just wanted to show you the fra directory now it was empty now it will have a subfolder called a database name and if i go into that particular folder there will be another subfolder and you will see what is that subfolder and it is an archive log so it is using this particular folder to store the and we did not create this particular folder when we converted this location into the fra automatically uh, when we set this location as fra automatically oracle created this subfolders now that's done so now what we are going to do is we are going to check the r main parameters so before doing that let me minimize this let me connect to the database once again so clear r main target or i and we are already set i have not disconnected so i don't have to set it again and show all and you can see the con control file auto backup is currently off i want to change it to on because as a best practice we need to make sure that the control file auto backup is on so i'm going to change it to on <laughs> that's done now if i do the show all from control from this off it would be on so let's see that and you can see i've changed so this is the way you can you can change any of these parameters and this particular parameters will control the backup behavior there are multiple parameters i'm not going to cover each of every of them maybe in some other tutorial but what i wanted to tell you is like this particular parameter controls the backup format now that we have understood the admin configuration parameter and how to change those particular parameter it's time to take our first backup and what what we are going to do is we are going to use i we can use either this or either this so let me take let me run this particular command and let me run the backup archive log and before running the backup let me uh, before running the backup let me exit and let me clear sorry <coughs> let me clear and what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you list backup command which will show me that there are there is no backup there is no backup specification does not match any backup which means that there is no backup at all for this particular database i'm going to run the backup database command let's run that and it's going to take the backup and it's going to take the backup in this location so if i do now ls minus l you can see automatically auto backup this is where it will store the sp file control file auto backup and this is the actual backup that is happening and the backup has been finished so you can see auto backup is it's storing the control file and sp file and actual backup has been stored in the backup set with the folder of the date parameter so it's created a subfolder so <coughs> let's let's go to that particular location and under that you will find a subfolder with the and you should be able to find the backup so this is your backup file now we have we we were able to create and let's see if we can take the archive log backup and our database is in the archive log so we should be able to also take the archive log backup so we have now the backup now if and he, where that particular backup went that particular backup went to the fra location by default the backup went to the fra location when we don't specify anything and if i just say backup database here or backup archive log and if i don't specify any location then by default it is going to the fra location now you can control that particular behavior using the rmn configure parameter i'm not going to touch it so sometimes you might wonder my backup is not going to fra location it is going to different parameter look at your rmn configuration parameter you might have set some destination into that so just a bit of caution that if you if you are not specifying any location however your backup is still not going to the to the fra there might be a chance that you have set a different parameter now what we will we have taken the backup of the database we have taken the backup of archive log now if i want to take the backup of 
this particular database into a different location is it possible yes it is very much possible so for that what i'll do is like i'm going to create a separate directory a brand new directory and i'm going to allocate this particular channel and i'm going to take the backup so let's do that i'm going to create a separate directory i'm going to go to that particular directory and i'm going to see if there is any backup and you can see there is absolutely no backup here now i'm going to go to the rm and target so you can see that what i'm going to do now i'm going to clear the screen and i'm going to connect to the rm and target and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to here is the directory that we created i'm going to clear the screen and i'm going to say ls minus l this is the new directory that we created and this particular directory i'm going to use here allocate channel here i'm going to use the same directory and what is going to happen now is the backup is not going to go to the fra however the backup is going to so it is possible to take the backup at a different location and for that you will have to allocate the channel so let's do that and now if i come here you should be able to see that i got the backup it was completely empty total zero now i got the backup information here so the backup has gone to dbe backup location so the backup has gone to the different location and how why the backup went to that location because when i took the backup and this is the concept here that when i took the backup i allocated a channel and when i and i said where is that location of that particular channel so it is possible to take the backup to a different location and you have to allocate the channel now the channel is a, a different concept and it is used to parallelism etc etc i'm not going to go there now we have understood the the difference of incremental cumulative and etc and we have also understood the level zero is the parent backup or the full backup and all the level one backups are different from the level zero backup now there can be a differential incremental or a cumulative incremental and how do we take that we use the first we take the level zero backup and then we take the level one backup now remember one thing here now what if what if i don't take the level one zero backup and by directly i try to take the level one backup what will happen and i'm going to show it to you what will happen is i'm going to i'm going to actually go to the fra location um so dbd slash or our data slash fra and here under this i'm going to go to the database and i'm going to go to the backup set i'm going to clear this and i'm going to say ls minus lrt and what i'm going to do and I'm, i have to go to the date so i'm going to go to that location and what i'm what i'm going to do i'm going to maximize this clear yeah so what i'm going to do now is <clears throat> i'm going to i'm instead of taking the level zero backup i'm going to take the level one backup and see what exactly happens so i'm going instead of taking the level zero backup i'm going to try to take a level one backup and see exactly what happens so let's do that and i'm going to say backup incremental level one database and when i even though i said the level one database see here it says starting incremental level zero data backup so oracle actually identified that the database don't have the level zero backup at and the first level one backup actually turned out to be the level zero backup and i'm going to show you the size of that particular backup so keep a note and that particular size is pretty similar pretty similar to the full backup so incremental level zero backup and the full backup that we took using the backup database is almost similar to the size now what we are going to do is we are now going to take the level one database backup so it's it's a delta backup i'm going to take that particular level level one back data backup and here you can see that the backup is finished you can see the backup is finished and the size of that particular backup file is pretty small so the level one backup saves it is faster and it is it is smaller in the size the full backup and and the and this time when i said the level one backup first time when i said the level one backup it turned out to be level zero but now the level zero backup is there so when i said level one backup it actually took the level one backup not the level zero backup and we have seen all of the concepts now i just want to show you how to verify your backup so you can use the rm and commands such as list backups which we have already seen but i'm going to show it to you so if you wanted to if you want to see the information about your backup you'll say list backup and it will show all of this information and if you want to see the only information about your archive log you can use the list archive log so we can see there is a archive log information now this is you can use the if you want to see the backup set you can use the backup set now you can also use 
the some of the views and i'm not going to show you all of the views but here i'm going to show you this particular one of this particular view i'm going to show it to you and here i'm going to say give me information about archive log and we you can see that we have one archive log backup uh, ending with k09.arc so let's see if this particular view gives us that information and you can see k09arc this is the archive log backup that we have taken so we got one archive log backup the when i said list archive log when i said list archive log all here i got this particular archive log and same information i can get from the from the v dollar backup file so v dollar backup file gives me that information now if i want to i don't want the archive log file but i want actually the backup pieces i want to see the backup pieces then i can run i can say file type is equal to piece and then it will give me the backup set so these are the this is the auto backup of the control file and sp file so it's giving me the, that and these are some of the backup sets now what i'll i'll actually i intended not to show you this but i'm i'm just going to show you this so i'm going to take this and i'm going to run it here i'm going to run this here and you can see here the first backup is db full the second backup is the level zero which is also cons considered as a full and the level one backup is the db incremental backup so this is these are the three backups that we got so you can use rman backup job details to get the backup information uh, and again finally i would like to say that the backup stores sp file you can have the backup of sp file control file data file archive log and the password file is not stored in the backup with this i'm going to end this particular tutorial i hope you learned something new today i hope you learned how to take the oracle backup rman backup we understood the concept of what rman can do uh, how to connect to the rman what is archive log no archive log how to identify whether the database is in archive log how, what is the difference between cold backup and hot backup what is the fra concept how to convert the database to archive log how, what is rman configuration how to change the rman configuration parameter how to take the backup of your database to FRA location, how to redirect your backup to different location, what is the concept of incremental and differential and uh, we uh, learned to take the backups and we also identified how to get the information about your backup. I hope this particular tutorial was useful. Thank you for watching. See you in next tutorial. Till then, enjoy and if you do like the content, if you do like the videos, please subscribe, have a smile, have fun in your life. And thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial. Bye-bye.